four, three, two, one. Over the last few months and years, those of us who are space enthusiasts have been treated to the greatest show on Earth. We've had a childhood of pictures and movies of exciting rocket ships flying to space. Now somebody is actually doing it. Best of all, they're succeeding. This might seem odd because, compared to their competition, SpaceX are tiny. It seems a paradox that a small company with fewer people and fewer resources would pop up and change the space access market for good. You have to ask, are the people at SpaceX just smarter than everybody else? Is there something magic about SpaceX? Well, no, I don't think so. I just think that they know and practice something that most of us don't, but probably should. SpaceX know the secret to success, though it's not really a secret. In fact, I think there is a lesson here that we can all learn from them. Let's face it, be it in life goals, work, money, relationships, we would all love to have more success in our lives. Wouldn't it be great if there were a simple trick or life hack that you could adopt that would bring you success? That's what this video is all about. In 2021, the launch of a Falcon 9 rocket is something that is pretty routine and unremarkable. Watching the first stage booster come drifting down to a gentle landing, it's hard to believe that before 2015 such a feat had never been achieved before. Roll the clock back a few years to when SpaceX wasn't even on the scene, and this feat seems even more remarkable. At the time, NASA was planning to retire the space shuttle and go back to an Apollo-like capsule. This capsule, part of what was called the Constellation Project at the time, is still their plan, and it still hasn't flown. The modern space industry enjoys a reputation that it perhaps doesn't deserve. Talk about rockets and spacecraft to people, and they tend to picture something super high-tech and futuristic. It's probably the legacy of the Apollo era, with a dose of Hollywood and Star Trek thrown in. If you ask anybody who has worked in the space industry, however, they will tell you that the reality is something very different. Compared with other modern industries, space is actually ultra-conservative and low-tech. The cost of launching hardware into space is high, so phenomenal amounts of time and effort go into making sure that nothing goes wrong. This permeates everything, from the materials that can be used, to the old, slow electronics. It all has to be simple, reliable, and, ideally, identical to what worked last time. In this industry, there is one maxim, which is, never, ever fail. To this end, everything is meticulously planned, tested and checked before anything goes near the launch pad. As you might expect, under these conditions the rate of development has been excruciatingly slow. Speaking at a 2007 TED talk, the aviation pioneer Bert Rutan summed up the space industry and its problems extremely well. What we're looking forward to is not only the inspiration of our children, but the current plan right now is is not really even allowing the most creative people in this country, the Boeings and Lockheed space engineers, to go out and take risks and try new stuff. We're, we're, we're going to go back to the moon and oh, 50 years later, and we're going to do it very specifically planned to not learn anything new. Back to SpaceX. On the day that I'm recording this, the SpaceX YouTube channel has 319 videos. Mostly this is just video after video of successful satellite launches. But to me there is one video that really stands out. It's called How Not to Land an Orbital Rocket Booster. It's a compilation of every attempt they made to land the Falcon 9 first stage, showing each moment when it all went wrong, set to cheerful music. In an industry where failure is the worst thing imaginable, SpaceX are not just willing to fail, they wear their failures as a badge of pride. Why? But return again. Pilots. Airplanes was invented by natural selection. Now you can say that intelligent design designs our airplanes of today, but there was no intelligent design really designing those early airplanes. There were probably at least 30,000 different things tried. And when they crash and kill the pilot, eh, don't try that again. 
Uh, the ones that flew and landed okay because there was no trained pilots were, had good flying qualities by definition. So we, by making a whole bunch of attempts, uh, thousands of attempts, in that four-year time period, we invented the concepts of the airplanes that we fly today, and that's why they're so safe, as we gave it a lot of, a lot of chance to, uh, to find what's good. That has not happened at all in space flying. There's only been two concepts tried, two by the U.S. and one by the Russians. As he explained, the rapid progress that was made in the early years of aviation was down to the lessons learned from an incredible number of failures. Success is an appalling teacher. Failure is where the lessons are learned. The people running SpaceX, Elon Musk and the people around him understand this, and that's why they will launch a rocket along with Musk's proclamation that he only gives it a 1 in 3 chance of landing successfully. When you think about it in terms of costs, it also makes a great deal of sense. The cost of building and destroying some hardware is actually very economical when you compare it with the cost of employing a huge number of giant brains to try to guess at how a design will fail and how to prevent it from failing. There's nothing magical about what SpaceX are doing. They are deliberately learning through failure. By building a simple but ambitious design and crashing it, they are just collecting far more relevant data than their rivals, and for a fraction of the cost. So, as individuals, what can we take away from this? The first thing to say is that we don't need to learn this method of learning. As humans, it's hardwired into us. When we were babies and we were learning to walk, this was the method we used. We all wobbled and fell over, again and again, until we had it figured out. It's only as we get older that two things happen. The first is that we develop an ego. We care, often too much, about what other people might think of us if we make a stupid mistake. The second thing is that we get exposed to an education system in which the emphasis is always placed on getting the correct answer. Tests are to be passed, never to be failed. We are never encouraged to try the wrong answer so that we can see what we can learn. In fact, this is a problem that particularly afflicts intelligent, educated people. To use Rattan's analogy again, we don't believe in evolution, we believe in intelligent design. We tell ourselves that with enough knowledge and thought we can fully understand the problem before we act, that we can jump to the correct answer and avoid failure by being smart. One engine for the landing burn. To put it in SpaceX terms, we want to fly up high into space but what none of us want is a moment like this. Let's face it, we've all been there and wished we weren't. That moment when suddenly everything is going wrong and you're about to crash and burn with the whole world watching. Nobody wants to look stupid. Nobody wants to fail. So we don't try, we don't fail, and we don't learn. So ask yourself this. When was the last time you let yourself fail at something? Have you ever considered failing more often? I'm not trying to encourage you to go out and risk your physical safety. Even SpaceX are being very careful in that regard with their unmanned flight tests. Gone are the early days of the jet age when countless test pilots lost their lives. Maybe you're an engineer who's been agonising for weeks over some aspect of a design. It could be over some detail, or it might be you're unsure about the whole concept. Why not just build it as it is right now? It will almost certainly fail, as in it won't work or it will break. But you can see how it fails, and that information will get you moving again. What we want is a safe failure, obviously. You might want to use a mock-up if you're working on, I don't know, a suspension bridge or something. This approach doesn't just apply to the technical realm, though. In fact, it's an unwillingness to take social risks that can really blight our lives. Maybe there's someone you'd like to ask out on a date. Have you asked? They might say yes. Or maybe you might discover that it was never going to work out and you'll be able to move on. Instead, you can focus your energy on finding somebody else you'd like to ask. Maybe you want a pay rise. Have you asked for one? Maybe you'll get one. But then maybe you'll fail and instead you'll come away knowing what skills your boss would like you to work on. Or perhaps even that you're working at the wrong place. In my opinion, the important lesson from SpaceX is that failure is normal. Failure isn't personal. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you, so don't take it personally. In fact, if you pay attention, you'll probably notice that those who are most successful are the ones who have failed the most. When you see failure as an opportunity to learn something, some risks seem much more worth taking. It's only through failure that success becomes inevitable.
I think that a fair few of you who are watching this video are young enough that you will get to visit space, to work, to explore, maybe even for a holiday. When you do, the vehicle that you fly in won't look like this. It will look like this. Thunderbirds are go!